a recollection of a theosophist. One was often impressed by the tolerance and kindliness of Sri Bhagavan. It was not merely that he recognized the truth of all religions, for that any man of spiritual understanding would do. But if any school or group or ashram was striving to spread spirituality, he would show appreciation of the good it was doing, however far its methods might be from his own or its teachings from strict orthodoxy. A government official at Tiruvannamala used to visit Sri Bhagavan occasionally. He wanted to ask his opinion of the Theosophical Society, but whenever he went, he found a crowd of devotees there and he shrank from speaking before them. But one day he went determined to submit three questions. And this is how he tells it. The questions were, Can you grant me a few minutes for private personal talk, free from all others? I should like to have your opinion of the Theosophical Society, of which I am a member. And will you please enable me to see your real form if I am eligible to see it? And he said, When I went and prostrated and sat in his presence, there was a crowd of not less than thirty persons, but one and all they soon dispersed. So I was alone with Bhagavan, and my first query was thus answered without my stating it. That struck me as noteworthy. Then he asked me of his own accord if the book in my hand was the Gita, and if I was a member of the Theosophical Society, and remarked, even before I answered his questions, It is doing good work. I answered his questions in the affirmative. My second question also being thus anticipated, I waited with eager mind for the third. After half an hour, I opened my mouth and said, Just as Arjuna wished to see the form of Sri Krishna and asked for darshan, I wish to have a darshan of your real form, if I am eligible. Bhagwan was then seated on the dais with a picture of Dakshinamurthy painted on the wall next to him. He silently gazed on as usual, and I gazed into his eyes. Then his body and also the picture of Dakshinamurthy disappeared from my view. There was only empty space, even with no wall. Then a whitish cloud in the outline of the Maharshi and of Dakshinamurthy formed before my eyes. Gradually, the outline with silverly lines of these figures appeared. Then eyes and nose and the rest, and other details were outlined in lightning-like lines. These gradually broadened till the whole figure of the sage and Dakshinamurthy became ablaze with very strong, unendurable light. I closed my eyes in consequence. I waited for a few minutes and then saw him and Dakshinamurthy in the usual form. I prostrated and came away. For a month thereafter, I did not dare to go near him. So great was the impression that the above experience made on me. After a month, I went up and saw him standing in front of Skanda Ashram and told him, I put a question to you a month back, and I had this experience, and then I narrated the experience to him. I requested him to explain it. Then, after a silent pause, he said, You wanted to see my form. You saw my disappearance. I am formless, so that experience might be the real truth. The further visions may be according to your own conceptions, derived from the study of the Bhagavad Gita. But Ganapati Sastri had a similar experience. You may consult with him. I did not, in fact, consult Sastri. After this, Maharshi said, Find out who the I is, the seer or the thinker, and his abode. A rare anonymous devotee. A visitor came to Virapaksha, and although he stayed only five days, he was so obviously in the grace of Sri Bhagavan that Narasimha Swami, who was collecting material for the biography called Self-Realization, on which a great part of this book is based, 
made a point of noting his name and address. There was an elation, a serenity about him, and the radiant eyes of Sri Bhagavan shone on him. Each day this man composed a Tamil song in praise of Sri Bhagavan that was so ecstatic, so spontaneous, so overflowing with joy and devotion, that among all the songs composed, these are of the few that have continued to be sung. Later, Narasimha Swami visited Sachamangalam, the town the man had named, to collect more particulars about him, but no such person was known there. It has been pointed out that the name Sachamangalam means abode of blessedness, and suggested that the visitor may have been an emissary from some hidden abode of blessedness, come to pay homage to the Satguru of the age. One of his songs hails Sri Bhagavan as Ramana Satguru. Once, when it was being sung, Sri Bhagavan himself joined in. The devotee who was singing it laughed and said, This is the first time I have heard anyone singing his own praise. And Sri Bhagavan replied, Why limit Ramana to these six feet? Ramana is universal. One of the five songs is so instinct with the joys of dawn and awakening that one can well believe it may have celebrated the true dawn for him who composed it. It goes this way. Dawn is rising on the hill. Sweet Ramana, come. Lord Aranachala, come. In the bush the cool sings. Dear Master Ramana, come. Lord of knowledge, come. The conch blows, the stars are dim. Sweet Ramana, come. Lord God of gods, come. The cocks crow, the birds chirp. It is already time, come. The night has fled, come. The trumpets blow, the drums beat. Gold bright Ramana, come. Knowledge awake, come. The crows caw, it is morn. Snake-decked Lord Shiva, come. Blue-throated Lord Shiva, come. Ignorance is fled. The lotus is of the heart open. Wise Lord Ramana, come. The crown of the Vedas, come. Unstained by qualities, Lord of liberation, gracious Ramana, come. Lord peace, come. Sage and Lord, one with being knowledge bliss, Lord Shiva dancing in joy, come. Love on the summit of knowledge, Past pleasure, past pain, come. Blissful silence, come.